Hi, I'm Allie. It's been over six years since we've done this video, so we thought we'd do another revamp of it for you. This is the Tubular Knit Herringbone. I have it on as a necklace here. You can make it as a bracelet, and I'm going to show you how to do the design and the beautiful ends. So make sure to watch to the end because it's going to be different than the previous design. Have a lot of super duos? Go ahead and stay tuned to watch this fun video on a new twist to an older stitch. So to begin this design, I have my materials laying out and I'm choosing to use three different colors of my Super Duo beads to get a nice pattern design. I have 11 O seed beads here and we'll bring out our wire guards and I'll show you a different ending from the original video and how to do your ends to create this nice magnetic clasp. We're gonna begin with our thread. I'm using .006 thread with a size 12 needle, and you want a long stretch. I've got about five feet of thread. I have a stop bead on the end of that, leaving myself at least six or seven inches to go back and put my tail on as I'm creating. From here, I'm going to add a series of three of my Super Duos in my Aztec gold color here that have an 11-0 before each bead. So there's an 11 L, then a super duo, 11 super duo, 11 super duo. I'm going to let that all drop down next to that stop bead. And then what I'm going to do is sew back through all of those beads again. This is going to help to stabilize it to make sure that it stays into a circle. Pulling nice and tight here. Take all this thread through and get our circle. You're going to see it set up then almost like a triangle and we'll go back and we will pinch this together at the very end of the video so make sure to stay tuned for that. I want you to make your thread and needle exit through one of your 11-0 seed beads. So you're going to exit through an 11-0 and we're going to get ready now to step up and to create the tubular design. After completing that triangle there, I want you to take your thread and needle so you make sure that you're exiting through an 11 OC bead. After exiting the 11 OC bead, we're going to switch to our next color in line, which is our turquoise. I'm going to add a turquoise and an 11 OC bead onto my thread and needle. Coming out the 11 O, I'm going to go into the super duo that's next to it. We're going through the second hole or the open hole of that super duo. Taking our needle and thread through there. And then also, before adding any other beads, going through the 11-0 that sits after that Super Duo. Exiting the 11-0, we're going to repeat. Add one Super Duo along with one 11-0. Go over to the next Super Duo and go through that second empty hole. And also then down through the 11-0 seed bead that sits from the beginner row of three. We're going to do this one more time and you can see that I'm letting it fan out and sit towards the exterior because I'm not going to pull it up into that tubular design until we have it really started and going. Add your super duo on your 11 0 So through the next super duo there. Pull all that thread through and then you're also going to sew through the original 11 O seed bead that your thread was exiting when you started adding the second row of seed beads. Give a nice tight pull and that gets that first rotation finished. So you're starting coming out that 11 and you're ending with your thread coming out that 11. After coming out of the 11 O we are going to step up to get into our tubular shape. I'm going to take my needle and thread out of that 11 OC bead and we are going to go into the second hole here of our super duo that we added this previous row. Because I'm coming out of the super duo, the order is going to change. Instead of a super duo 11 -0, we're going to pick up an 11 -0 and then a super duo. Switching off to our red color. Go through the 11 -0 that sits right after that super duo and then you're also going to go through the second hole of the next turquoise super duo. Now it's going to start to turn into that tubular effect as I pull my thread tighter. 
and those beads are going to sit up. Coming out the Super Duo, once again, I'm going to add an 11 0 add a red Super Duo, sew through the 11 0 after the Super Duo right there, and then also sew through that next turquoise Super Duo, the second hole, and give a nice tight pull. So you can see this is starting to turn into that tubular shape as I push them up against one another. Coming out that Super Duo, once again, 11-0, Super Duo get added. I'm going to sew through the 11, that's right after the Super Duo. And then I'm going to sew through, once again, that second hole of the Super Duo bead that my thread started out with. That closes off and finishes up this second, pro, this second, or rather third row. So we went from our gold to our turquoise to our red to end this row. As you finish up this second row, you'll notice that your thread is coming back out at the starting point where you started that third row through that turquoise bead. We are going to once again step up. You're always going to be stepping up through the first bead that you add in the row that you've just completed. So we're stepping up through our gold seed bead. From here, coming out of the seed bead, we know that we need to add a super duo first. When we're coming out of the super duo, we add an 11 0 first. So we're gonna add one of our Aztec super duos followed by our 11 0 seed bead. So through the second hole of the red super duo that you just added in the last round, and then you're also going to sew through the gold bead that's next in line, which as you wait for that tube to start, it can be a little bit tricky to figure out where that is. Currently, it's going to look like it's between that turquoise and the red bead. Once you sew through there, it's time to add on your next combination of Super Duo 11. Sew through the next red second hole of your Super Duo bead as well as the next 11-0 seed bead that sits between the turquoise and the red. Coming out of that seed bead, once again, add your Super Duo followed by your 11-0. Step up through your red bead, second hole, and then also come out through that 11-0 seed bead that was the bead that we started with. Again, it looks like it's sandwiched in between our turquoise and our red. I would suggest if you are teaching yourself this pattern, use three different colors of Super Duo. There's a reason for that. Here, when I get to this point, I'm going to, once again, step up. I'm stepping up through the second hole of the first bead that I put on on this last round, which is going to be my second hole of my Super Duo bead. Switching once again, I'm coming out of my Super Duos, and you can see my tubular shape is really starting to form now. By row five, six, you really get the hang of it. Coming out of that second hole of the Super Duo, I know I'm coming out of the Super Duo, so I'm going to start with an 11-0. Add an 11-0 and a Super Duo. I'm gonna sew through the next 11-0, as well as the second hole of the next Super Duo. I'm spinning it in my hand as I'm working with it. Coming out the Super Duo there, 11-0, Super Duo, through the next 11-0, and up through that next Super Duo. You're always adding three per row along with a seed bead. Coming out, seed bead, Super Duo, going into that seed bead that sits right after it, and then also going into, once again, that Super Duo. As you are coming out of the space where you started, that second hole of that gold Super Duo, you're then going to, once again, step up. Stepping up means going through that next bead, the first bead in the, that you added on the last previous row. So I'm coming out in 11-0. When I come out at 11-0, I know I need to add a Super Duo first. Super Duo, then 11-0. Sewing through that turquoise super duo second hole then, as well as the 
11 OCB that's next. Coming out, oops, coming out of that 11 OCB there, I just have my thread twist in there. I'm gonna add another one of my super duos followed by an 11 OCB. Those get added and I sew through the next turquoise bead, second hole. And I'm also sewing through the next 11 OC bead. Third time then, going to come out, coming out of the 11 O, I know I need a super duo, followed by an 11. Sew through the second hole of the turquoise bead. That's there. as well as the original 11 -0 that my thread was coming out of. It can be a little bit tricky to start this design, but once you get going, it's super repetitive. Then I'm ready once again to step up. Stepping up means I go back through the first bead that was added in the row I just completed. In the case of the super duos, I step up to the second hole. Coming out of a super duo, I know, time to add an 11 -0 first. 11 -0 gets added, followed by a super duo. Go through the 11 that's next, as well as the next super duo. Coming out the super duo, 11 OC bead, super duo, go through the next 11, and then step up through the next super duo. So it's very repetitive once you get that habit. I'm going to continue on adding in my design here always exiting through the bead that you started with in the design and getting ready to start my next row. So I'm gonna continue on here adding in and creating with my super duos and my 11 O's for this beautiful knit tubular design. Once I'm done and have my length, I'm gonna show you how we get ready to attach on our ends. So stay tuned for that seaming process. If you're still having a little bit of trouble on this, remember you can always go back and watch the video and even slow it down in your YouTube settings if you would like. As you progress in your design, you can see those beautiful different colors starting to really pop up, which work really, really well for this herringbone design. When you're looking at it too, it's nice to have those different colors in order to tell you which row you're on, when to stop, if you've stepped up, and then continuing on. So it's just the exact same thing over and over then as I go through, adding in two beads, and then also going through two beads as well. So each row gets you closer and closer to the end. I'm gonna continue doing my knitted herringbone here, and then as soon as I'm done with this knitting herringbone, I will get ready to show you how it is a nice and efficient way to do the ends of the design. Here's my step up there, through my super duo, and onto my red beads. Once you get the length of your project where you want it, I'm gonna show you how to close up the design and we're just gonna add a simple magnetic ball clasp along with a wire guard. I'm coming out of the last rotation here, stepping up to my gold bead. I just did a round of my Aztec gold. I'm gonna have that be my ending color since that was my beginning color. And as I pull here, I'm looking and seeing what is available to go in and attach to. I have three seed beads or three super duos here that have openings. Normally I would go in right now at a seed bead or super duo and then sew into that 11 0. Instead, what I'm going to do is add one and two 11 0 seed beads and sew into the top of the next gold super duo. Once again, one and two, sew into the top of the next super duo. And what this is doing is closing up this rotation here. And then I'm gonna go back through that first gold super duo as well as through that gold 11 0 seed bead. And once I'm through the gold 11 0 seed beads, I'm gonna go around, and this is actually just a peyote style stitch that we're gonna do. So we have two groups of 11 0 seed beads here. We're gonna add one 11 0 seed bead between each one of our two gold 11s. That's gonna pull that gold into the middle even more. One seed bead goes on, I skip over the super duo, and I go through the 11, or go through the two seed beads. Add one 11 0, skip over the super duo so that 11 0 is going to sit right on top of the super duo, and go through the next two 11s. Giving a nice tight pull, then I'm going to step up like we have been doing through the first 
of that 11 OCB that I just added. So you see here, you have two 11s that sit between the superduos, then you have one 11 that's sitting on top of basically at the end of the superduos. I'm gonna take my thread and needle now, and I'm gonna sew through without adding any extra beads, all three of those single C beads that we put at the top. And see how that just closes that up really, really nicely. After closing that up, I'm gonna add my wire guard, going through one loop, coming down the second side. If you're not familiar with a wire guard, they work that they have a little U channel that your thread is gonna sit inside of. At the same time, I need to put in and sew on my clasp here. Make sure that's sitting inside that wire guard. Pull that down towards the end here. And I'm gonna skip over the next 11 OC bead and sew into the third one. And just pull that right there to the middle. Sew over to the next 11 OC bead, and then we're going to reinforce the clasp. So we're back to where we started, going through our wire guard, through our clasp, down through the other end, and down through the third bead. So we came out of bead one, skipped over two, went into bead three, and so forth. That's gonna put us as close to center as possible. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew down the project and get ready to knot off the end. This is how we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side as well. We're gonna take, take off our stop bead. We're gonna go in here and take off the last of that C bead. And we're gonna add two in between where there is one. So I'm gonna continue here, sewing back down through the project. And when I sew through the project, I'm gonna sew down through, back a couple of my stitches. You can see I'm back there through that super duo. I'm gonna reverse the thread, sew through that same super duo through the opposite way. Bring the thread back a couple stitches and you'll be able to tell exactly where you need to go so that you don't see any extra thread edge. Then because I'm using beige thread, right near one of my gold beads. I'm going to pick up a bridge thread here, go underneath the thread, and a bridge thread, if you're unfamiliar, is one of the threads that connects one bead to the other. You can see I've made a loop under there. I'm going to sew through that loop once, sew through that loop twice. Give a nice tight pull, getting that knot as close into the bead as you can and then proceeding back with my stitching here through a couple more beads. And then going in with my thread burner or my threads up and burning that off. Just like I did this side here, I'm going to do this secondary side, once again, taking off my bead stop or my stop bead. Sometimes you can pull it off, sometimes you need to put the needle back on. And what I'm gonna do is just loosen this just ever so slightly. And I'm gonna repeat the same thing here. Now I already have that single C bead there. I'm gonna come out of the super duo and basically ignore that single C bead and add two C beads between each one of my super duos, which is gonna start us over in this ending pattern. So on this secondary side then, I've taken off my stop bead, I'm coming out of my super duo and I'm just adding two more 11 O C beads between each one of my super duo. Like I did previously then, I'm gonna step up through those two seed beads, grab one 11 O, and sew through the two seed beads that are already there. Once again, one seed bead, sew through the two that are already there. One seed bead, through the two that are already there. After finishing that up and adding those final three beads in, we're gonna step up through the first one of those three beads, sew through, just those three beads to bring this into a closed unit. See how that's nice and closed. Your ends will match exactly. And I'm going in then grabbing my second wire guard and doing the exact same thing. So you're just gonna sew through coming out that bead, add on your wire guard, sew down through the wire guard on the other side, add your clasp, which wants to stick to the other magnet here making sure that sits inside, and then skipping over the next 11 O and sewing into the third one in place as you add your clasp. I'm gonna reinforce this going back through one more time and then sewing down and burning the thread off just as we did previously in showing how to make these beautiful herringbone knit tubular bracelets. 
Guys, thanks so much for watching, and hopefully if you've struggled before, this video helped to clear it up for you. Remember, if you do need any supplies, need some more Super Duos, or want to check out this kit, go ahead and look below the video in the description to shop with us online at Potomac Beads. As always, I hope you had fun, and get ready to enjoy the next video as well.